Hello again, YouTubers. Welcome back to Near Mint Condition, where today we celebrate 25 years with the Super Nintendo, the 2D powerhouse of the 90s. Good luck. So we're going to talk about the Super Nintendo, the system that really kicked off the 2D limits of video gameplay back in the late 90s, early 90s. Okay, I sort of agree. Um, no, the Super Nintendo was phenomenal. I loved it. I remember the very first time I saw a picture of Super Mario World in the uh, Nintendo Power magazine. And the colors blew me away because I didn't know there was a Super Nintendo coming out. Mm -hmm. I thought, I was like, oh my god, they unlocked the secrets of the Nintendo to make it so much better. <laughs> yeah, see, what I remember about the Super Nintendo, I didn't have one. I was, again, Sega kid. <laughs> Sega uh, kid. So, so, you know, basically I remember that uh, Sega does what Nintendo don't. Oh, that hurts. That hurts to this day. <laughs> this year is the 25th anniversary of the Super Nintendo. So I wanted to kind of get into what we thought games we got a chance to play when we were kids that changed us because Super Nintendo really was revolutionary. Yeah. Tina, can you take that off because you are freaking us the fuck out. Oh, it sorry, is you sorry. still under there. Okay, yeah, yeah, it's, it's totally me. Sorry. Oh, hey, what's up? How you doing? Hey. <laughs> Carry on, Rob. Where did Tina come from? <laughs> Where... <laughs> da -da -da -da. Okay, so um, you were talking about how the first time you saw the Super Nintendo in a magazine, you were like, oh my gosh. My first time I saw the Super Famicom was EGM number two. And you know, like, I'm a little kid wow. and I'm like, you know, I'm at Video Supreme. Do you remember Video Supreme? And yeah. So I saw this issue of EGM two when it talked about the Super Famicom and had this thing. And I remember looking and going, wow, that's a beautiful thing. And like what you were talking about, Super Mario World was like, 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 what is this game? This looks really fantastic. This hardware looks really fantastic. So uh, I just want to go around the table and talk about, like, you know, I can talk about 100,000 Super Nintendo games, but just want to get into some of your favorite Super Nintendo games. My favorite? I, I know you're going to ride me on this Okay, one. so then, you know, it doesn't have to be your favorite. Just some I'm games riding Rob already you. because he's wearing a fucking power glove, but, knowing but, but, that was not but, 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 but compatible cool? with the Super Nintendo. But it's so bad. I love the power glove. It's so bad. Bart's Nightmare. Bart's Nightmare. That's how we're gonna cut, kick this episode <laughs> off. Of Bart's Nightmare. Bart's Nightmare. Now I do. I played Bart's Nightmare. Um, the Super Nintendo had an advanced Sony sound chip, so music on the Super Nintendo was really good. And I remember the music the in Bart's Nightmare. The music was really, really nice. The game was mediocre at best. <laughs> well, it was a bunch of basically what I call like mini levels. Mm -hmm. Kind of like a Wario aware of its time, mm -hmm. but not no one as has fun. ever compared Bart's Nightmare to Wario Wear. <laughs> no, no, she's right. There was like, no, there's there's like there a flying games. stage. There's no, flying I know, stage. I know, I know, I know the bubbles. There's a, there's the like balloon. The balloon stage. Um, that's the the like germ stage. The the. <laughs> No, I, so I love these. And the whole thing was to get these papers. And it was really annoying because if you didn't get those papers, you got an F grade. Uh-oh. I'm going to go with Super Metroid. Su Super Thank you for redeeming us. <laughs> <laughs> Super Metroid. It's okay to like bad games. It is. It is. That's not a t-shirt. <laughs> Super Metroid was one of the first games where... I thought that they had perfected it, right? Like, they took the formula of Metroid where you feel like you're thrown into this alien world and you're alone, and it's almost like a claustrophobic feeling, and they perfected it in this with the music and the graphics. I mean, do you remember how big Kraid and uh, Ripley were? Yep. Yeah. And, and of Ridley. course, Ridley. Ridley. Sorry. Ridley. Well, what's funny is... <laughs> Aliens. Yeah. What's funny... Alien. What's funny is that now that I was older playing this, you know, I was in high school, I got it. Right? I got the mm -hmm. whole uh, Ridley thing. I'm like, oh man, they totally took that, you know, from Scott... Uh, Ridley Scott. Yes, his name, and they made it into Ridley. <laughs> so I thought that was really cool. No, but just the music. And then the, like, the hard-assness of this game, too. That they throw you in there with, you know, no, ma no manual tells you what to do. Like, I remember 
the time that you have to learn to wall jump from the little m green monkey creatures. Mm -hmm. Like, you, you know, you got stuck in this hole, you fell down this hole, and you had to figure out how to wall jump by watching these creatures. Again, like how That's to run great and things like that. A absolutely, you know, the, the little uh, capsules that you would get throughout the game to give you unlock powers. It was just an amazing game. It's, uh, you know, it's the perfect Metroid. It's kind of like what you had talked about with uh, our NES episode, talking about NES Metroid, the mm -hmm. atmosphere of this game. And because of this... Like it's a whole... Like they kept going with it. It's a whole package. It's got yeah, the music, the, the setup, and Just these... the beginning eeriness yeah, of it's... the little beeps. The Super Nintendo game that I wanted to play, that I thought was really cool, was ActRaiser. And I never really got to play it. But it seemed like the coolest damn thing between both the sim elements and the 2D and everything. Yeah. And the music. And the music. So Act Razor, First level. Act Razor is one of those games, and we have to make sure that we play some Act Razor music. Act Razor and Castlevania 4, which I'll talk about just as make that's going to be my pick, had this music that was symphonic. It was by a guy named Yuzo Koshiro, who did great music for your Genesis, Streets of Rage and mm -hmm. Shinobi 3. Like, his musical compositions were amazing. So this game, the music, is the first time, because we'd gone from blips and bleeps and bloops, admittedly good like music on the mm -hmm. NES, good to bleeps. good bleeps and bloops, to symphonic music, like strings and horns and timpanies and everything. So I All remember- on one keyboard. Oh. <laughs> And I remember I literally invited people over to my house to listen to the first stage and the second stage of like the shopping stage of Act Razor. The music was so good. And I can't talk about good music like Act Razor without also talking about Super Castlevania 4. I'm a big, I know you're a Castlevania guy. Yeah. Uh, this game was innovative that it actually utilized like the controller to do all the special functions. It had cool mode seven and mode seven effects, like some of the, in case you don't know what a mode 7 effect is. In the NES days, we just had side scrolling things that up, down, left, right, right. Mode 7 could take like backgrounds and shift them around and change pace and change how they look. So this, even though this was an act, a 2D action game, it used a lot of these cool 2D effects. And S Super Castlevania 4, with the amazing soundtrack, it was kind of a remake of the original Castlevania. Mm -hmm. So you fought like the Mummy, Medusa, Dracula, all those guys. Earthworm Jim. I'm going to save the best for last. Uh, uh, yeah, this is you just keep digging that hole. <laughs> no, 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 Earthworm Jim was actually good. It was one of the better like side scrollers at the time. Yeah, yeah. For me, yeah. it was fun. It was fun. It was fun. It was a lot of fun. I do remember that. Yeah, yeah. That's uh, David that's a, Perry's. There, his his one of his games. That yeah, they yeah. It's a little earthworm that jumps into a suit Dude, and a starts suit? kicking ass. No, it's and like you start off like you hit a platform and cow is like cow launched, and then like if you beat the game, you figure out what yeah. happened. Mm -hmm. No spoilers. Not gonna talk about that. And all the crows were after you and all the crows. time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, this is this is really close and near to my heart, but. Final Fantasy 3. Final Fantasy. Before, you mean Final Fantasy 6? Before it was known as Final Fantasy 6, all we knew was game. Final Fantasy 3. Final Fantasy 3, to me, is the perfect RPG. The, between the graphics, which kind of pushed the limits of the Super Nintendo at the time, and the music, and the 14 fucking playable characters. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Too optional, but 14 mm -hmm. characters that you could play. It had an amazing storyline. You know, it had the greatest bad villain, Kefka, Kefka. who's like a uh, more twisted. It crazy. It, he's a more twisted Joker, right? Yep. Like, you like think his... he's a side character at first, and then, then of course, uh, no spoilers because this game is so old. Um, but he turns out to be the major villain, a godlike villain by the end of the game. Mm -hmm. And there's a and his th theme is just his theme is amazing. amazing. Everybody's theme. Mm -hmm. Locke is the greatest character of when, all time. When you call me, Locke's theme plays on my phone. That's right. It's fucking better. <laughs> so, and there was... a character in the Japanese, Tina. Yes. Uh -huh. oh, which yeah. they turn it to Tara. 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 Yeah. Right. Tara's but, a, yeah, it makes more sense in the American version. Her theme is beautiful. Every yeah, theme it's, in this game is beautiful. It's the first time you could play as Mog mm -hmm. in, you know, the Final Fantasy world. But what got me is, as a kid, I remember playing this and totally calling in the school because I was sick <laughs> because <laughs> was halfway too. through the game something happens that I had never seen in a video game before the world is destroyed mm -hmm. right so all 14 characters are scattered throughout the world mm -hmm. and one of your characters Celis you start off with her she's on a deserted island island with her grandfather Sid and he's dying and she's 
and you're playing this and you're just alone and there's nothing to do but like go and get fish trying to make him better he, he has the option of dying that's another thing in the game yeah, and it's different... it being in every final fantasy game before and after yes mm -hmm. bigs and wedge as well from star wars mm -hmm. uh yep. so she loses it she loses it so much that she tries to commit suicide she jumps off the fucking cliff mm -hmm. and commit uh, and kill and tries to kill herself uh you know she does not succeed but I was, the game as, a kid, <laughs> as a kid, like, I, I knew, oh, yeah. as a kid, I as a kid, I knew I was experiencing something I had never seen in a video game before. It went from video game to holy shit, this is a fucking you know book style storytelling. It was amazing, and then like I said, I can't. If you have not played this game, stop what you're doing. Right stop now. what you're doing, unless you're having sex with a bunch of midgets. <laughs> Stop what you're doing right now and start playing this RPG. So yeah, that game was one of the first 24 megabit games that came out, and it yeah. also was one of the first games that took advantage of the 512 color palette that the Super Nintendo could do, and took advantage of all the sound channels that the Super Nintendo could do. Super Mario World. Super uh, Mario. You know, I, because it was, you know, the first time I really had time to dive into a Mario game. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, and that's the first Yoshi and everything, and then just the, the mechanics of it were new, but you know, but it's familiar enough that it was just like jumping into uh, to, to the universe that I recognize. I just love that game. Well, let's talk about Super Mario All-Stars very briefly. Mario All-Stars, we had talked about Super Mario Lost Levels and things like that, mm -hmm. and Mario 1, 2, and 3 for the regular Nintendo. Super Mario All-Stars was all those games stuck in a box, and it had the cool updated graphics and music and things like that. I didn't dig on Super Mario All-Stars because I loved the music and sound effects of the NES and hearing the different sound effects, the game, like the way Mario jumped was a little teeny bit mm -hmm. different. So it wasn't, I own the game, it's probably over there, but it wasn't my jam, it wasn't my jam. What was your jam? Well, <laughs> of all those games, I'll talk about what was my jam. Now let's talk about Mario, Yoshi's Island. Really? It's one of your favorite games? One that's, of, a, that's a shocker. If you say, like, top three Super Nintendo games that of all time... Which I am me, saying, man. Yeah, I think that's what we're talking about here. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's what I said. <laughs> Yoshi's Island is maybe my favorite Super Nintendo game. Because You're such a politician. Yoshi's Island is definitely maybe my favorite <laughs> Super Nintendo Probably, <laughs> I don't at least get today. In so ahead. I don't want to get in trouble. My favorite game. Uh, this is Miyamoto at his finest as far as level design is concerned special effects. This uses the Super FX chip, which I'm going to talk about a little bit later. Uh, scaling graphics, and if the premise was Mario's on top of little Yoshi, and you weren't, you weren't really controlling Mario. You're controlling Yoshi, Yoshi, you get like change colors and get special abilities. But the art style was just fantastic. The music was all like country. I think mm -hmm. Miyamoto himself is playing the banjo, like, and like, <laughs> they took that and sampled it. So, if you're looking for the perfect like design 2D platformer, Yoshi's on on the Super Nintendo, I believe is it, and it is probably my favorite game on the Super Nintendo. You may not agree with my last picks, but Secret of Mana. Oh, Secret of Mana. Yeah, Secret of Mana is, yeah, go ahead, you it, talk first. Well, it was one of those games where, you know, you're playing it and then you realize you have the opportunity to, to actually multiplayer, like invite your friends over You and realize you, you have used for your Hudson multi-tap, yeah, multi right? Two, Besides like, Super Mario, or Super, Super Bomberman Man 2. Yeah. An RPG that involves other players and it's just like mind blown as a kid. You're like, I can experience the joys of an RPG with my closest friends and experience these gorgeous backgrounds and visuals mm -hmm. so before you, you're absolutely right so before the internet before you had Xbox Live before you had PlayStation like before internet you had to have friends mm -hmm. right in order to, <laughs> or, or you can have siblings or like you I could did. or right. you could have the loneliest <laughs> game experience with Secret of Mana <laughs> when you realize I don't have anyone to play with and mom's too cool to play with me. Because I, I played it with my brothers and to this day it is probably my favorite video game experience that I've ever had because it's just me yelling at my, and I still do that, yelling at my brothers to heal and heal! You know, use their magic the because I'm the hero and it, it I'm was... I'm the tank, you're the healer, yep. between, do your job. Honestly, it was a hard pick between that and Final Fantasy 6 because that was a fun game and it's a and it really does hold a special place in my heart because I played it with my brothers and you know we would 
we would play it every day. We would yell at each other. We would storm out of the room, shut the door, and say, fuck you, I'm done. Come back around. We gotta beat that motherfucker. Let's do this. Yeah, so... You know, so it, was a, it was a lot of fun. I made all the excuses just because we didn't own... My brother's system was the SNES. Oh, okay. I had the Genesis. <laughs> I, yeah, I, 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 know, I know, I'm sorry. But no, we, we, we split the systems. But I didn't own uh, Secret of Mana. I own Mortal Kombat. But I would you always chose make... chose poorly. <laughs> I would always make excuses to go over to my friend's house who did own oh, Secret okay. of Mana. And I would play with him just constantly. And I'd be like... Hey, you you mentioned the soundtrack. I still listen to that soundtrack when I have to study for an exam or something. And it, and, it, and it always reminds me of those really good times of playing video games with my brothers. Mm -hmm. Like, I love that soundtrack. My last game I'm going to pick is Mega Man X1. X one. This totally... One. Okay, one. so you had Mega Man 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. five. I don't think 6 had come out yet. And then this totally changed the ball game. Because, you know, Mega Man was this cute little chubby fella that was going around shooting bad guys. And, <laughs> and even though it was hard sometimes... You know, it's still kind of cutesy. This changed the game. This threw you in the middle of like dystopian future where robots and mavericks are ruling everything and they're destroying everything. And once again, much like Super Metroid, you had to learn yourself how to get power ups, how to use your double jump, jumping off of walls, and things like that. You start Good off game with. Design. Yeah, excellent game design. You start off with about that much life and it's difficult. You it's get hard. your ass handed to you until Zero comes in, saves the day. But. You know, I unfortunately the only thing I can say besides um, is that this game did not uh, have the memorable villains like Mega Man. Because yeah. I mean, I can't tell honestly, you any villains Bubble in Mega Man, Man X, and yeah. Metal Man, easy names to remember. This one had like Armadillo Racer, you know, yeah, things like that. There was a penguin, there was a, penguin, there was a falcon, or a wonderful or designs. Oh, oh, so they had a theme, like it was. Yeah, it wasn't. It time. wasn't like something man anymore. Yeah. Easy to remember names. These, you know, were animals or yeah. bacteria yeah. later on. But it's a wonderful game. Star Fox. You know, it was one of those franchises that looked really fun. Uh, the Genesis couldn't handle it. <laughs> oh no! I, I think the They're, Genesis uh, couldn't handle the trademark. Actually, no. <laughs> Actually, there is a little bit of truth to that, right? Because Star Fox was a game that had the FX chip. The Super FX chip. And what it basically was, was a math coprocessor to allow the game to do extra computations, giving a little bit more power, which means this game could do 3D polygons that no other system of the time ah. could and do. And they advertised the crap out of it. So, yeah, Nintendo I'm, Power that commercials. That is coming back to me now. Yeah, so, so, so Star Fox was one of the big ones. There's a buggy game that uh, is escaping my name. But there's some other games that also had these chips too that didn't, that if you tried to rip them, they didn't work. Uh, Mario Kart had Super Mario Kart. Oh, yes. Super Mario Kart. One. This is the game that started all yeah. families hating each other and calling <laughs> each other names. Horrible stories about Refresh my memory. Was that the one where Rainbow Road appeared? Yes. Yeah, the yeah. of the okay. Rainbow Road. And yeah. That, when you called your mother in law the like, C word. Screw you, you. Yep. Yeah, yeah. And you called the princess the C word. That was because of this game right here. But Super Mario Kart, Pilot Wings. F Zero, all these games had chips inside of them that provided the extra computational capabilities for the games to do, like, cause like Mario Kart, like you know, you're running around yeah. the stage like this. Same thing with piling wings, you're flying. Um, Star Fox was the big one, and like it was really like as a kid, we were used to like you know 2D graphics, and we had never seen flat. anything. Would you say that it pushed the <clears throat> system to its limits, or would you say that a game like Donkey Kong Country, because Donkey Kong Country was rare, like. Very first, like they, they That's just big knocked thing. it out of the fucking park with yeah, that game. Yeah. This is right before the N64, or back then it was called the Ultra 64, was about to come out, I believe. Yeah, that's right. And so Nintendo needed something as a kind of a stop gate to get people still interested in the Super Nintendo. So they render these things. They render Donkey Kong. They render Killer Instinct, if you remember that game. Oh, they yeah. render these guys and were Ultra able to. Ultra Combo! Ultra Combo! They were able to, like, compress and make this game looked like this in Donkey Kong Country back when it came out we were all completely blown away oh my gosh we're playing like that was Toy Story time frame I think we're playing like Toy Story on the Super yeah. Nintendo yeah. and really it was just a tr cheap trick because all it was try to just, keep you still interested and still get sales out right before their new right product. before the new thing came out right and like it's kind of cheating because they just render the things and just turn them to sprites and animate them very well so it was a right. little bit cheating but it worked in addition to Rare making this really it was actually legitimately a fantastic great 2D platformer and was hard as balls but a lot of fun Chrono Trigger this was 
we we make fun of Squeenix. We talk about Squeenix <laughs> releasing games today. This is the first instance of Squaresoft who did your Final Fantasy games in like Rad Racer for the Nintendo and Enix, which did Dragon Quest and Ogre Battle and things like that. <laughs> those two guys or those two companies coming together and then like the But big... really it was just Square renting a Kira Toriyama for character yeah. design. <laughs> Kira Toriyama. That's, that's Enix's part. Yeah, like they you... were like, Can we borrow Kira Toriyama, please? If you look at this, you can see <laughs> oh, it's, yeah. it's Goku. It's like all Goku Bulma, they're everyone here in this game. So Kira Toriyama did the art. Uh, Sakaguchi did um, he did uh, producing and game design and Yuji Ori these are the this Yatsumaru, is Final Fantasy and Dragon Quest guys right. Matsuda did the music right, right. Mm-hmm. so this is the perfect conglomerate conglomeration of like the top tier RPG like folks putting their heads together and making this game and what was amazing about this game so this is I think 11th grade me 11th or 12th grade me 1995 <laughs> The okay, game came out in, I think, 1995. Yeah, 1995, I think, is the copy around that game. Like, even though I was a kid, I was still, like, you know, writing and drawing my own type, like, <laughs> RPG. So I made this time travel game in my notes in physics class, right? And then this game comes out, I'm like, well, crap. I guess I can't <laughs> do that anymore. But it was time travel. The graphics were amazing. The soundtrack was phenomenal. The gameplay is one of the one of the early games that did like an active time battle the characters were memorable so the bad guys like magus his theme i still you mean vegeta that is probably like my top top game top rpg and that's saying even though earthbound is sitting right here we'll just have to talk about that mother 2 you mean <laughs> mother 2 also known as earthbound we can yes. definitely talk about that another time thank you guys for watching near mint condition if you like please subscribe Comment down below, what are your favorite things? Do a barrel roll! I want to, talk, I want to focus on, because the deal is... That is really <laughs> fucking freaky, her <laughs> mouth is moving. Okay, wait, say, do what now? We're gonna talk about the game. <laughs> <laughs> you do not want to put that in there, Rob. <laughs> oh, says you. It would hurt.